the opening prayer and the closing prayer. Yeah. Yeah. That's not true. That's easy to do. Somebody can do it. Not a problem. Yes. Tell them back. It will come back. Uh, Swamiji, today uh, you said Bhagavad Gita's second Gyutpatti. Yes. Uh, song for which Bhagwan is the subject matter. Yes. Can you break the Gyutpatti in Sanskrit? Like, can you tell? No, it's that? the same Gyutpatti. Bhagavata Gita. Gita. But it is six. Six. Uh, shashti. Shashti Tatpurusha compound. Sixth uh, case compound. Possessive case hmm. compound. Hmm. Like the song of the Lord. Hmm. Bhagavata hmm. hmm. means of. Or if you look at it from the passive voice stand of, uh, standpoint, Karmani Shashti mm. is called, then from there, from the passive angle, it comes with the meaning it is the song for which the subject matter is the Lord. Okay. Very beautiful. Yeah. And both of them apply. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Sanskrit and Vedanta, that's paradoxes and puns. <laughs> There is this text called Bhaja Govindam. In fact, it's a whole sentence. The word Bhaja Govindam is a sentence. Bhaja, worship, adore. So the projected world needs a 
another kalpita shakti, a, 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 a kind of a power, a projected power to make this universe come to life. And the status of Bhagavan, the one who is the overlord, is born. Just like last month, we had, what was that? We had the coronation of King Charles III, correct? And then we had that, that secret anointing of some oil. I'm sure it came from India, they're just not telling. That's why it's secret. <laughs> so, so, we had that anointing and then they put one scepter, it's like a, a globe. They asked him to hold it, probably weighing many, many kilos. Also mined from India, I'm sure. And then, and then he was asked to hold some, if you see the photos, this long stick, we call it stick but it has a name. Okay, yeah. And then, then he was declared king and some, all these robes, poor fellow must have been feeling very hot. With all, so many layers and layers, all these fanfare, rituals, everything. That's how the king is born. You take away the insignia, you take away the paraphernalia, and suppose he, he goes to an Indian village where nobody knows him that much. Just be another English person coming to visit, right? Yeah, no different. But then, with that, and that, and that, oh, King, King Lakshana, signs of King. So similarly, when Brahman wears a crown, after and then a cape, a cape of all bhagas, lined with the border of samagram aishvaryam, samagram viryam, samagram balam, samagram yashas, all these things we talked about, jnana, vairagya, a cape embroidered by maya shakti. And when he dons that, he becomes Sagunam Brahma. He, she becomes Sagunam Brahma. Essentially, without this paraphernalia, what is that? Not fit for transaction. Not describable by words. Words are just chatter, talk. So, what do you mean when you say the one who is found in the words, through the words, by the words? Is that not a contradiction? Not really. Because we use, we use words not in the same way as our everyday language. In the everyday language, we have four ways in which we deploy the words. One we have already discussed, adjectival usage, tall tree, big lake, small flower, these are all adjectives. Then we have nouns, fan, table, chair, curtain, room, hall, etc. We have nouns. Nouns, adjectives, and then what else do we have? Yeah. Verbs, runs, sits, stands, walks. And then finally we have words that connect things people, situations together. My text and what else? And somebody can say my table, my room, not mine, his, hers, 
theirs. These are all relational words. This is what the gamut of words are there for. We have jati, nouns, kriya, action, guna, adjectives, sambandha, relationship. Jati, kriya, gunas, and sambandha. This is what the words do. What other words? What else is there? Nothing else is there. Does Brahman, is Brahman a noun? Yes, technically. But then, what you know, noun means it should have some description. What kind of description will it have? Zero. Noun means it's one of many things. Jati means it's a species. So it should have many kinds of, like tree is a jati. Brahman is not a jati. Then, Kriya. What does Brahman do? What does it do? Nothing. Nothing at all. And no Kriya. Does not run, does not walk. Yet, without it, no running can take place without its presence. It simply lends its presence and its sentience to all actions without acting itself. So no Kriya. Guna. Tall Brahman? No. Short Brahman? No. Fat Brahman? No. Thin Brahman? No. Why? Because the work of the adjective is to sort out one thing from many of its same class. There are many lotuses, bring me the big lotus. There are many big lotuses, bring me the pink one. There are many pink, big lotuses, bring me the fragrant, big, pink lotus. You can say that. But instead of lotus, if you put Brahman, it's going to sound very funny. There are many Brahmans. No. This is the knowledge of oneness. How can there be many? So the adjectives uh, are not useful. Jati, cross. What else? Kriya, verbs, cross. And then? Sambandha. Guna, cross. And finally, Sambandha. Brahman is related to me. No. All that is there. Relation means there should be at least two. But there is only one. So, this, the one who is found through words means what? The one who is found through the special deployment of the words that we already know. Used in a very ingenious way. This is part of Vedantic pedagogy, part of the methodology of teaching. It's really phenomenal. I can't use words to talk about Brahman, which you do not know. Kunji Swamiji used to illustrate this by saying, Gaga Bhukha. What did you understand? Nothing. It has to be words that are known. But then it can't be a, a noun, it can't be a verb. It, I mean, it, it, it cannot be in the nominal usage, it cannot be in the verbal usage, it cannot be in the adjectival usage or a possessive case usage. So the same words are deployed. To denote that which is the truth of oneself, that which is free of name and form. And if it is free of name and form, the first conclusion we come to is maybe it doesn't exist. Because if it is free of name and form, 
It doesn't have adjectives. It cannot be talked about. Right? It is zero. Shunya. Non-existent. Says who? Me. Me the great. One can say. Are you existent or not? Of course I am existent. What are you talking about? If you are existent, then and if you say the truth of the world is non-existent, isn't that a rank form of self-denial? When the sentient conscious being is denying the very source of existence, which one really is. Very interesting. So Shunya, that would be our Buddhist friends, at least some varieties of Buddhism. So we don't have shunya, cannot. You cannot say that things are non-existent. You cannot say, I am non-existent. And the only Brahman we know is the truth of you. Asan bhavati Asad Brahme Tive Vachet, Astit Brahme Tiche Veda, Santame Nanta Tobi Duriti. This is what is chanted in the Samadhi Mandir during Abhisheka. You can listen sometimes. Asat Eva Sahabhavati. The person becomes as good as non existent. The one who says there is no such thing as Brahman. <laughs> Brahman is you. So then, how do we describe the indescribable? No, you can't describe, you have to feel it. What are you going to feel? And they will elongate the word feel. Feel it. What are you going to feel? No, there may be a Brahman feeling, feeling euphoric, going, you know, levitating and all these things. If that is Brahman, then when you come out of that feeling, that means what? Brahman gone. Then you get into the feeling, Brahman agaya, and then you get out of the feeling, Brahman chale gaya, gone. <laughs> In the lecture, we don't talk. Afterwards, I will talk to you. Okay? So, let's listen. Maybe by the end of it, even the question may be answered. If it is not, you can talk to me. So then, what is the use of this? Aya Ram, Gaya Ram, Brahman. This Brahman that comes and goes. I have already enough things in my life that come and go. I don't want one more thing that comes and goes. I want to find that thing, knowing which everything is as good as known, knowing which all my sorrows and my fears, there is a full stop for that, not a comma, but a full stop. That is what I want. And if that is what I want, then how is this, how is this communicated? What kind of words do we use? The first word that is used is Sat. Sat means that which is, is called Sat. Our idea of is, is connected inextricably with time. Is, 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 was. Everything in the life is today, gone tomorrow. We don't have an idea of an eternal is. There is no eternal is. Because our conditioning, our collective conditioning is all about that which is time bound. There is no eternal is. But here, the word Sat goes through a spin cycle like the washing machine. You put in Sat, 
regular self that we know is which is got the grime of time okay and then what what does it do there is a little washing off of the time bound connection to the world is then it comes out of the wash and then you say what is this satya satya what is that that is made into an abstract now is ness is has become is ness and when we talk about is ness even though when you write it you know i'm sure all the word processors will put a red line under it saying there is no such word but you understand is ness simply is that which exists and then how does it exist is if it exist is is sentient or is it jada insentient for that we just have to ask one question are you insentient and if you say yes please see me after class <laughs> so are you insentient no you're scaring me no you're frightening me are you insentient no no so i am i know i am chit that is chit chit has also gone through the wash chit means gnanam chit is understood as i know janami asmi aham asmi i am janami i know i am bhami i shine i shine because i know i am that is the shine self evident i i shine अहमस्मि सदा भावि कदा चिन्नाहम प्रिय ब्रह्मवाहमतस्थितं सच्चिदानंद लक्षणं दीज आर द ओपनिंग वर्ड्स ऑफ अद्वैतम अद्वैतम ब्यूटीफुल टेक्स्ट व्हिच आई होप वी स्टडी वन डे अस्मि आई एम and i shine not that you are an isotope radioactive <laughs> green colored fluorescent no shine means it is it is the knowledge of the very being i am i am is equal to i know i am i know i am so if i know i am then we have to see the nature of this knowledge the nature of this knowledge is that which never becomes i do not know no ignorance at all what ignorance no but i do not know i do not know greek i do not know mandarin language i do not know so many things i do not know vedanta you can say all that how do you know you don't know ha huh? ha ah, you know you don't know that means there is no don't know is the don't know that is been overtaken by i know i know i don't know means you know and that i know never becomes i don't know and that is so that is satchit how long is this is ness last that is the next question this is ness this being ness this conscious ness this being ness how long does it last forever forever all the time because that is in keeping with the human uh, desire the desire to be forever why human even a mosquito wants to be forever that's why it bites when you're not looking because if it bit you when you were looking it knows you will give it instant moksha you'll go like that 
So that's why it bites when you're not looking. It also wants to live forever. It also wants to be forever. And in that forever is the secret of happiness. That happiness and forever are one and the same. One and the same. That's why even in the fifth marriage vows, people say this time it is forever. <laughs> what about the other four times? Don't talk about the other four times. This time it's forever. And in India also, like suppose if the parents are very happy, my son, my daughter has got a job, and the other parent, what do they say? Is it permanent? <laughs> Nothing is permanent, okay? At least on the level of this world. But that is the question asked. Is it permanent? No, three months probation after that we'll see and all these things and they, you know. Is it permanent? Oh, I just shifted into a new, a new home. Is it yours? Is it, it belongs to you? Doesn't you know you finished, you cleared all the mortgage. Or oh, this is how it is. One is in search of happiness that is connected to a sense of permanence. And that is described by Ananda happiness, which is Ananda never ending, limitless. And so that is Satchidananda. So the word Sat has gone through the wash and then has been cleaned off the finitude associated with the word existence. The word Chit has also been scrubbed very nicely because Chit means Jnanam and when you say knowledge, know, I know, then the word know is a transitive verb. Then the question comes, what is it that you know? What do you know? And so here, it also has to be scrubbed because it is that which is neither the knower, nor the known, nor the means of knowing. But yet, without that self-effulgent I, without that presence, Nothing works. There is no knower without it. There is no object of knowledge without it. There is no means of knowledge like eyes, ears, etc. without it. That which lends its presence to the knower and what shines on the knower, that which lends its presence to known, so you can say this is a pot, that which lends its presence to the eyes which cognize the pot. But yet, it is not the knower, it is not the known, and it is not the means of knowing. That tri tripod is gone, that triad is gone. It is that consciousness which sustains everything without being any one thing. It's just wonderful. Satchidananda. That ananda helps, the, the ananda, the word ananda is the soap that helps scrub the sat and the chit to make them free of time, place and object, to remove those limitations associated in our heads. This is how the words are deployed and this is the govinda of the bhaja govinda. Bhaja is imperative, second person, imperative mood, it's an order. Worship, it's not may you worship, worship. Now, there is a sense of urgency, like bring me that when you say, there is no time to say please, do you think it's a good idea to put water on this fire that is engulfing this whole building. Nobody talks like that. Fire, bring water, quickly. There is an urgency. Govindam bhaja. It's a sentence. And it is attributed to Adi Shankara. 
like many other works are. And we will turn to the first one, and then we'll take it up again tomorrow night. Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Govindam, Bhaja Moolamate, Govindam, Bhaja Moolamate, Samprapte Sanvihite Kale, Thank you.